Hi, welcome to Bear Mountain. Today, it's been 10 days now since we put these into the cooler, which is actually our root cellar. Uh, it's been in here at about 55 degrees, the anemones, and they are ready to pull out. Matter of fact, they're already starting to sprout. And when you look at the surface of them, you can see some of the little green tips of the leaves are getting ready to go. So I thought what I would do is just, uh, for an example, just kind of probe around in here and pull one or two out and see what we got. And look at these roots. We got a beautiful tip, beautiful roots. This is the new technique that we learned from uh, Evergreen Floral. Forever Green. Forever Green Floral, excuse me. Farm. A, uh, farm in uh, England. England. And thank you for the prompt. <laughs> Uh, but it seems to work really well. We had very little uh, mildew or anything of that nature. The roots sprouted very nicely um, and maybe because we had better airflow around them. We decided not to double stack them in the crate because um, they actually we couldn't get much into the crate uh, other than the one tray. So from a space wise it was a little, a little not quite as good as we thought but actually I think in the, in the scheme of things it worked out better. So we're going to take these down to the crate house and we're going to start planting today. The next step uh, when, after we get down there is we're going to uh, kind of gently sift off the excess peat moss perlite and then we'll have uh, a crate or tray of uh, corms to plant. And it looks to me like I think we've got really good pre-sprout going here. So let's take a trip down to the crate house. Okay, we've moved uh the pre-sprouted anemones down here to the crate house. Our next step is, is we're going to sift these out gently because we do have some tip growth on this one. This is our maroon uh, or Bordeaux color, which I guess is kind of a burgundy color. It's a dark color. And uh, we've got about 210 corms in the tray. So we're going to gently uh, use this crate, which has a wide opening sieve-like uh, grate structure at the bottom of it as our sifter. And we're just going to gently see if we can get these guys to kind of come out a little bit. And they're breaking apart nicely as long as they don't smash each other around too much. And then gently shake it back and forth. Now, if you don't have something like this to sift it in. You can easily use a piece of like hardware cloth, which is quarter inch mesh wire that uh, you can get at uh, home centers or, uh, or a uh, hardware store and make your own little frame and you can just sift it gently on that. So these guys have been in our uh, cooler for, this is the 10th day, so they're in really good shape. So if we can see these guys, we've got lots of good sprouts. Some of them are a little bit further behind, but the majority of them are right on the money. So this looks like this technique is, uh, is pretty good. Um, we've got really good, there's no soft ones, there's no mildew. Um, there's always some that are a little slower than others, but the majority of them uh, have germinated, so it looks like this is really a, a good time to do this. So, the experiment paid off. Um, it looks like we shaved our pre-sprout time down by uh, almost uh, seven, seven to eight days uh, compared to using the old mesh bag technique. And it looks to me like uh, we have a lot less reject. What and, percent do you think that you've got for germination? Uh, I'd say the ones with the most aggressive roots are probably about 75%. And then there's quite a few which just have little sprouts right on the top that are just showing green like that one. But there's no real roots yet. So, I mean, they're a couple days off from roots. So these guys are all in good shape. Um, sometimes the dark dirt covers it a little bit. But um, there, none of them feel soft or squishy or anything like that. And there's no mold or mildew in here, which is a vast improvement uh, over the way we were doing it before. So let's go to the next step and put these guys into the crates.
Okay, this is our crate house. Um, we're going to be planting these guys in here today. And what we do is um, we put 21 in a crate, which is three rows of seven. And we don't plant them terribly deep. In this case, what we're going to be doing is, is uh, we're going to be setting them uh, such that they're in the soil. Um, not super deep, just use our finger, make sure the roots are covered. And we got just a little bit over the top. And then when we finish, uh, once we have them all in, uh, what we're going to do, the last step, is we'll come back through some, with some compost and just put like a quarter inch of compost right over the top of it. And that'll be the final. These, these crates have all been amended with um, fish bone meal and um, some other uh, type of minerals like azomite uh, to kind of help out. We continuously um, reuse these these boxes. We've done it for now. This is our fourth year doing this. And uh, what we've found is that by adding compost to the crates and minerals to the crates, um, that the actual, the soil is actually getting um, pretty good. So a lot of, I know a lot of folks, you know, raising straight peat moss, perlite, maybe a little bit of a handful of fertilizer in it, and then at the end of the season, pitch the whole thing. What we're trying to do is cut down on waste and extra time and extra steps. This house currently has 120 of these crates and we're going to be expanding it again to probably put in another 50. So um, anything we can do to cut down work is going to be appreciated by us. You may notice on the left side here that you're seeing, well, you've already got some anemones sprouted. This is an experiment and what we did is we took about 30 crates and we left in some of them from last year. These were very healthy uh, looking last year when they went dormant and they're just now beginning to sprout. Uh, we didn't do a whole lot to it other than um, you know just started running the drip irrigation on it about three weeks ago and uh, so far we're getting things germinating. They're looking a little bit on the peaked side, but that might be because it's actually been pretty hot in here up until uh, the last couple of days. But they still managed to germinate. And we probed around a little bit when we were just doing some weeding and some just general looking at things. And what we have found is that there's quite a few of them that are still that have not germinated yet. So the germination isn't really super even, but probably as we cool down over the next several weeks it will be. The idea behind this is that we're trying to see how much earlier we can force uh, these guys to bloom. So we kind of went with a safe color like white, uh, knowing you could sell that at any time. Uh, and we also have a little bit of red in here left over too. So you know, if perchance we happen to sell something around Thanksgiving or Christmas, uh, we'll be lucky that we got a kind of a Christmas color. Bonus. It's a bonus. So this is still, the jury's still out on this. We, we don't know uh, how well it'll actually produce or whether it would have made more sense for us to dig them completely out and then um, manually um, replant um, you know, the ones that we thought were the best. And that, that maybe that work would have made some sense, but we'll see what the yield is per square foot um, as we go forward. What you're seeing on top here is, is our, our base fertilizer mix. It's got some calfos in it, azomite, uh, cottonseed meal, and uh, some mushroom uh, compost in it. And, and that is, uh, we're going to come back through once we, when we get these guys planted, we're going to top dust these guys too with maybe uh, a very, very light dusting of compost. And then just water everything in manually for a couple of days until you know, the minerals and stuff kind of, you know, work their way down into the box. And that'll also, too, I think, help with germination. So, the first step in planting the crate, like we said, is, is we're going to make three rows of seven. So we're just going to kind of lay these guys out and uh, go for the ones that have the roots first, if we could. And we don't space them that far apart. So they're, they're usually typically until I get my first row figured out exactly how I want to do it. So there's two, four, five, and that one. Six and seven. So I could space these guys out just a little bit more. And then we go down and just do the third row or the second row. Same idea, just make them like equal with each other. Now you could get fancy and say, well, I don't want to make them equal. I want to change my spacing up a little bit. And if you got the space to do it, you could stagger them a little bit. So it's like, 
this is an, the second row becomes an offset to the first, and then the third row would be parallel to the first. In which case, they just uh, sort of find their own. They kind space. of find their own space. It doesn't really matter sometimes. So, and especially for speed, you know, and if make once sure you get into that this, you plant them. Oh yeah, very important <laughs> safety tip. Direction. If What's look, up and down? If you look at a corm, it's got a top and it's got a bottom, and the bottom is always pointed. And that one is right. Sometimes if they got roots, it makes it a lot easier. Two, four, six, seven. Perfect. Then we do this one. Now, this tray holds enough that I pre-sprouted to plant about 10 crates. So two, four, six, and seven. Perfect. So 21 in a crate. So it's not much to it more than that. Uh, once you get them laid out, uh, the next thing I usually do is just, since this dirt is so soft, just kind of you know squish them down a little bit with the fingers, you know, just so the top is just gently covered. You're not going to want to put too much over the tops of these guys, period, because if you bury them too deep, uh, you know, and you got to think about, you know, we're going to put some compost over this guy too, so we got to be careful. Do all those roots have to be covered right now? Um, since we're going to put compost over it, it's probably not going to matter that much. You know, so you just try to get them in as the best you can. Yeah, try not to let perfection be the the uh, enemy of progress in this. So, uh, especially if you got a lot of them to do. Uh, so the idea is, is is you got the roots covered, and they'll find their own their own space. So that's kind of it. And then, like I said, the next thing to do is put a little compost over it, water them in real good, and uh, my guess is within 10 days or so, you're going to see a nice, healthy uh, green tops here. So thanks for watching today. We appreciate it. If you'd like to subscribe to our channel, be sure to hit the logo up in the corner. Also, too, check out the show notes for any links or other descriptions that we might have inadvertently forgot in this video. And uh, also, too, be sure to connect to our blog. We have lots of information on planting anemones there, too. And this is part three of a three-part series, so be sure to check out the other parts one and two. So thanks again for watching today, and uh, have a good day.